tonight on Ghost Hunters International. The team goes to Scotland to tackle a bone-chilling case. The employees of the Ragged School are so terrified they will not go down into the basement alone. Look at that right now. Oh, something black mass. Can the team uncover the secrets of the Ragged School? This isn't what I'm used to back at home. <laughs> then it's off to England to investigate the ghost of a Victorian lady caught on film. This footage was actually shown worldwide. Can the ghost hunters debunk the footage? I want you to just stand in this corner right now. Ooh, what the heck? Or will this lady continue to walk the halls? Some kind of shadow just went into the maid's bedroom. Fill us in on our next investigation, Donna. So the Ragged School, guys, is completely empty, and it's huge. It's three floors, okay? Another thing I want to mention is it's connected to a store next door called Camera Obscura, and the way they're connected is through the basement. The employees of Camera Obscura are so terrified and so frightened that they won't go into the basement alone. Wait, home. have they seen anything, or they just have heard stories? Oh, no, they've seen things. It's first-hand experience here. Absolutely. They believe that the paranormal activity has spilled over into their building. Wow. Nice to meet you again. How are you doing? Right. Yeah. Well, we're in what was Reverend Guffrey's Ragged School, which is like a, a school for orphan children. It ran from the 1860s to 1920s. I'm a, pes a, a skeptic. I mean, I've never really been into ghosts. I never read about ghosts, that kind of thing. I've never even seen a ghost. Never, never even given it much thought. But since I've been here, there's definite things going on. I'm still not convinced they're ghosts, but there's definitely things that can't be explained. It's been abandoned in a derelict state like this for 40, 50 years, and there's been quite a lot of, recently, quite a lot of activity going on here. Where are we headed? Do you want to see a hotspot? There you go. Okay. Thomas Guthrie set up the Ragged School to teach children who couldn't really afford to be, to go to school, because back in those days you had to pay for your lessons. So he took children off the streets so he could teach them a trade. Right, guys, what you're in now is the very top of what was the Ragged School. Uh, we believe it was a sort of basic accommodation for the, for the kids slept, things like that. Uh, it was also um, sort of a top floor flat up until the late 50s, early 60s. I lived in the top floor. Uh, it was the Ragged School with my mum and dad and my brothers and sisters. Well, when we lived here, we all heard the footsteps, but there was never anybody there. Over in that corner, over there, um, a man has been seen standing in the corner. Okay, where to next? In the actual camera obscure building itself, there's quite a few things that happen in there as well. Yeah, so I'd love to show you that. Yeah, yeah. let's go. The Ragged School and the Camera Obscura buildings stand side by side. Uh, one dates from 1853, the other part dates from 1850. They're on different levels, but they are linked at basement level. Right, guys, um, what you're inside now is the, the actual camera obscure itself. Now, camera obscure is basically a giant pinhole camera. It's a large concave white concrete table in the center and a single pipe that actually comes down right over it. And that's the actual pinhole camera. And you get a whole panoramic view of Edinburgh. Several of my guiding staff, when giving guided tours in the camera obscura, have seen or sensed or felt somebody in the room who turns out not to be there. Yeah, we nicknamed this guy George because <laughs> he's seen quite a lot. Thanks, that was a great tour. Yeah, thanks, Guys, let's get to it. Uh, what I'm hoping for the ghost hunters is that they find something because it's not, it's not just the, the staff here, it's the tourists as well have seen things, heard things, apparitions, all sorts of activity. So it would be nice to know once and for all, I mean, is this place haunted or not? Here we are. 
the attic, the top floor. This place is creepy. It's a lot different at night, I'll tell you that much. I'd like to do a lot of EVP work. Yeah. Because supposedly there's been a lot of sightings of a man in the corner of the room over there. EVP stands for electronic voice phenomenon. And what that means is when you do a recording and you find a noise or sound that we did not hear with our own ears at the time of the recording, at that point, we start to think that there's a possibility that we're making contact with a spirit. You coming and join us? It's definitely cooler over here. Oh, yeah. Feel it now. All right, you're here. We feel you. Right here, my, my right arm. My whole back, I'm like... <laughs> All right. My knees are kind of shaking right now. <laughs> Isn't it freaky? I'm not used to this stuff on the investigations I've been on. I do a lot of homeowners' cases, and uh, homeowners are nothing compared to this case. This is Scotland. <laughs> All right, let's go over here. Oh, this used to be a fireplace. It's like, uh, it's definitely a fireplace right there. Just rubble. I thought I saw something up there. See a shadow? It wasn't my flashlight either. Did you see something up there? No. Hey, you have your uh, UEP? Yep. If there's somebody here, could you please tell us your name? Oh, I just got the chance. We're not here to harm you. We're here to learn about you. Why are you still here? Came all the way to Scotland to see who you are. Please say something to us. Do you hear something in that corner? I hear creaking down there. I'm going down there. set up with Command Central and all of a sudden this big black shadow came walking right behind me. I don't know what it was. I turned around, it was gone. So I was over here, I went over here, and when I turned around, somebody came right past me, behind me, and opened that door about three or four inches and walked. Did you grab the EMF detector? Did you? Did no, you grab anything? I didn't have time to grab anything. It was already going out the door. Well, at the command center, Brian saw a shadow move across the room. That's a great personal experience, but the problem with that is Brian failed to grab any equipment. I mean, he could have grabbed a camera, an EMF gauge, and gone after this thing. All we've got left is a great story and no evidence. And when I went to go turn around, it was gone, and that's when the door went, Arr! Barry and I went down to the basement to do some investigating. Yeah, let's check out the ambient. Yeah, just walk in darkness for a little while. Exactly. This is like being back in Transylvania. <laughs> As we were looking into a room that was off to the side, that flash over, flash there? over there? Yeah, I saw it. Right, okay. Okay, what is that? We saw a flash of light about three feet up the wall on the far wall. We hit that light as soon as we got down here. So we went exactly to where the spot was, where we saw the flash coming at us, but there was nothing there. There was nothing reflective. There was no lights it could have been reflecting off of. Okay, so you're gonna leave your recorder in here? Yeah. Okay. okay. Is there anyone here who wishes to speak with us? It would be very helpful if you could make a noise or move something in such a way just to let us know that you are here with us. Okay. Now we need a retreat out of here. Um, Let's go. Oh, I can't see a damn thing. Whoa. This goes back a little farther, Barry. 
to attack this conjurer. Now it works for me. Let's bang this bad bitch out. Oh, Barry? It's a big black mass. Ooh. Yeah. I wasn't there. That's that's actually that silver panel over there. It's it's absorbing the light. Um, reflecting. You sure? Yeah. Over over there. Oh yeah, yeah, okay. All okay. Right. Damn it. I took Andy up to the attic to show him where Don and I experienced the okay. cold spot. Well, first of all, this is what I want. I want you to show me where you got your cold spots. Right over there. You, you take me. Yeah. All right, well, that's an easy one. Oh, well, we got the little you got it. thingy right there. That's an easy one. All You've right. got a flu running up. Oh, yeah. And I can see daylight up all there. Right. OK, so that's, that's going to actually be creating an updraft. When we go in and do an investigation, it's always science first. We try to look for that natural scientific ability to explain what that activity might be. Anywhere else that you detected a cold spot? Yeah, we got cold spot in front of those windows over there. Single pane glass. Yeah. They're going to be drafty. Breeze from outside blows by this. Yeah. You're going to notice it. Of course. It's going to come through. Pick a side, pick any side. We're gonna do these two corners. You and I are gonna separate. Sometimes you just need to go quiet. No lights, no sound. Um, I'll do this corner. You wanna do this corner? I'm already familiar with it. Okay. Got it? It sucks. All right. I'm gonna be across the room right here. So, Shannon, lights out. Let's do it. Did you hear that, Shannon? Off to the left in that side room, it sounded like a footstep turning in the dust. I swore that I heard a foot pivoting. Yo, see it right there? On the second time I heard it, I jumped up, I ran to where I heard it. All right, I'm dropping on the thermometer. Okay. Seven. Come over here. Stay right there, 55. There's a theory out there that when a ghost starts to create a manifestation physically or visually, and it's actually drawing heat energy from the surroundings, creating a specific cold spot. Oh, yeah. Nice. Okay. We're at 55. We're dropping 54.7. 54.7. 51.7. Are you okay? I'm cold. Yeah? Just probably because I'm scared. This is Donna and Rob in Camera Obscura. The Ragged School and Camera Obscura are two separate buildings connected by a common basement. And this is actually where apparitions have been seen, especially that of a man. Her name's George. So we're going to ask some questions, and we welcome anybody who is here with us tonight. If anybody's here with us, could you please show us a sign of your presence? Are you George? I'm gonna put up my hand, and I welcome you to touch my hand. George, we've come a long way to talk to you tonight. Got a little tingly sensation in my hand, but I don't know. And I'm not pinching a nerve in my shoulder or anything like that. We'd really like to communicate with you. Is George the correct name for you? Is there another name that you prefer to go by? I felt a little something there. I don't know what's gonna turn up on the tape, but I'm hoping George came out and said hello to us. 
I had some great personal experiences up in the attic. So before we left, Brian and I wanted to get back up there and back it up with some digital photography. Anybody here want to speak with us tonight? All right. What do you think? Yeah. Grab my stuff. I'll grab the air right now. Okay, guys. Let's call it a night. Okay. Barry and I went down to the basement. We saw a little bit of flash of light. When we started walking around down there, and I started getting chills, the hair started standing up, which doesn't happen to me, and I don't like to talk about it because I want scientific proof. But right at that moment, I knew something was going on. I think we had a great investigation, and I think it was a pretty good case. But until we review the evidence, there's really no way of telling. All right, I'm done. And I'm out the door. Right now we're about to do the evidence review for the Ragged School. We're really excited about this one. I hope the guys and me can actually review the evidence and get some great, great evidence to back up our personal experiences. For this particular case, Andy and I are going to pitch in and help review the evidence because we have to meet with Alistair back at the Ragged School tomorrow. Um, Donna and Rob are in the camera obscura room, and uh, Rob asked a question. He says, is there uh, another name you prefer to go by? Tell me what you guys think this is. Uh, is there another name that you prefer? Wow, that was clear. Yeah, that that was really, really, clear. really crisp. You got to remember, that room was way at the top. Oh, there I was know. No one around. Both of us were sitting, so there's, it wasn't like we were pacing around when we were asking questions. We were both sitting down, and there was no one around. Okay. All right. I think... I one? might have a topper. Okay, listen to this. What the heck was that? Out of here. What the heck was that? No one was near the microphone at the time. Let me let me yeah. it. Hold oh, on. Yeah, yeah, please. It sounds like th on this one, it's struggling with the out of here part. So that's that's good, 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 good stuff. Hey guys, I've been looking through these pictures. I don't know if I found something. Can I see? Well, first of all, where was this, Brian? This is this don't, is don't point you. It out. Yeah, don't don't point it out. This is you taking pictures of me. Pacing back and forth like that old man. That is, that's really neat. I, I, I see it. I Do see you have it. to have an X and Y chromosome to see this? It looks 3D. There's the face. I oh, I see what you mean. The eyes, the nose. No, it looks like it's and, and this is what this is what I'm curious about. This shadow right there. That that actually is a shadow, shadow of the nose. Of the nose. The yeah. Uh, the blackness on the side. This is the location that I had a personal experience here. I Do we have any pictures of the same spot so we can oh, God, prove yeah. that the, the, it's not It's there. not on the wall. OK. Now, as you can see, there's nothing. Nothing there. This, none of the same ones. It's marks. gone. There's something that I think I should introduce to the team. This is a photograph. Alistair. Good to see you. We have some evidence to show you from our investigation. Okay. We come in as skeptics. You give us your stories, you tell us what happened, and then we go out and we try and debunk or disprove or explain all the things that happened to you. Okay. Uh, I actually had a personal experience. It was on the top floor, uh -huh. Shannon and I, actually decided to separate and go to both sides of the room. It wasn't too long before I thought I heard something in the side room. To me, it sounded like a shoe maybe pivoting in dust or dirt. I jumped up, I ran to that area, had my digital thermometer in hand, and noticed a dramatic drop in temperature. Very, very obvious cold spot where I was standing. Huh? Barry and I went down to the basement, and to our right, we saw a bright flash coming out of that room. So now keep in mind, we didn't have any flashlights on. We went in, we inspected the entire room. There was nothing there. And of course, 
personal experiences are great, but what gets us really excited is the actual evidence from the equipment that we use. And what I want to do now is play for you something that we caught on tape right. after we saw that flash. Okay. So what did you what did you hear on that one? That one sounds like to me oh, it was like out of here. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. And it's, it's, the way he's saying it is it's not it's not like they're um, speaking like the Queen's English as it were. It's, it sounds very Scottish almost very slang slangy. And we heard exactly what you did, which is out of here. This is myself and Donna up in the camera obscura room. Is there another name that you prefer to go by? What do you hear? It sounds like he's saying yes. That's, that's, that's exactly, exactly what, what it we, is. We thought. Uh, yep. It's a direct answer right after I ask the question. Do you go by any other names? Yes. Yeah. So that, that seems pretty, uh, <laughs> pretty conclusive. All right, so those are our EVPs. Okay. One of the things we did this evening was take as many pictures as we possibly can with our still cameras. All right. This is actually on the top floor yeah. of the school in that side room. Uh-huh. Okay. Well, I can definitely, yeah, there's certainly something there. I mean, it's like a face. You can see the eyes, definitely. And the top of the head. Mm -hmm. But you can definitely see the nose and the lips. I mean, it's not, it's like, it's not a slant, basically. It's mm -hmm. coming out like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm with you now. Okay. See, that, that, yeah, that's spooky. <laughs> <laughs> Now, there's more that went into this. Uh -huh. We were lucky enough to be able to speak to Bella, who was the last resident here. Mm -hmm. And she was able to provide us with some photographs of her father, who also stayed here. All right, okay. Definitely, compared to these two, the image looks like him. I mean, there's mm -hmm. no way it looks like that one. Is if it? you I mean, had to choose yeah. between these two men, that one, yeah. that one. The nose and the eyes are, yeah, do have a striking resemblance. I mean, okay, that, that's, okay, I mean, I, that's a bit spooky. This all happened in the side room, which when we did our research, we found that this gentleman in this picture yeah. died in that bedroom. That's pretty amazing. <laughs> After much debate and a thorough review of the evidence, we as a team have concluded that indeed this is a haunted location. Well, okay, that's, that's really spooky. I wouldn't worry about it. Nothing bad has happened. It doesn't appear to be dangerous. Yeah. Are you are you going to uh, tell your staff this? Or oh, I think, oh, I think definitely. I might take to the pub first, but to <laughs> yeah, I'll tell them, that's for sure. So it was an incredible investigation. We had a lot of fun, and thank you very much for having us. Oh, no, probably more than more than welcome. Thanks. Guys, so Alex, thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much. So for someone that was quite skeptical, hearing the EVPs, especially the one that was uh, telling them to get out of here, was quite scary almost. I mean, there's definitely something here. What it is, I don't know, but there, there is something. He definitely is someone who comes from a skeptical view. Which was good, which was sure. good. So yeah. it was like yeah. we were presenting the best of the best of our evidence, and he took an honest look at each piece. That's good. Let's move on to the next case and the next location. So we're going to Belgrave Hall here in beautiful Leicester, UK. All right, I'm going to hand you over to Donna, who's going to provide some details of what we're up against tonight. Hey, listen, this sounds like a pretty cool place. Belgrave Hall is a mansion, which today is rented out for private parties. It's actually a Queen Anne-style house. It was built way back in 1709, and so the hall was passed through several owners before it came into the hands of uh, John Ellis. The story is that five of John's daughters live there and are thought to have died there. There are supposedly footsteps are heard on the first floor landing. Room alarms are mysteriously activated when nobody's around. We also have visual stuff happening too. A lot of the visitors and employees witnessed apparitions. And in addition, guys, Belgrave Hall became widely known for its haunted reputation back in uh, 1998. When a closed-circuit camera had caught a series of images, and the footage actually shows two figures dressed in Victorian clothing. It sounds exciting, Donna. I can't wait to see this footage. Yeah, me too. It'll be interesting to see if we can try to debunk it or recreate it. So here we are. Hi, Rob. I'm Lee. Welcome to Belgrave Hall. 
I believe that Belgrave Hall is haunted and I would love the team to produce evidence to prove uh, to everyone else worldwide that the place is as haunted as what we believe it is. Okay, this is the dining room. So what do people experience in here? Only two weeks ago, we had 15 people in this room. And over in the far left-hand corner, people started seeing shadows, what they thought was people moving around. And it was like orange, sort of red. Recently, I went to Belgrave Hall and I managed to stay in there for about two minutes and I just felt so ill. I felt like I was going to pass out. Stones were being chucked, people were having their hair touched and my friend got pulled by the trousers, which just freaked her out so much. She ran out of the room crying her eyes out and I've never seen her in a state like that. OK. We're on the first floor landing. This is where footsteps are heard, and that is where the lady's actually been seen peering out of the window. So as I was on the first floor landing, I was looking back, and then out of the corner of my eye, through the banisters, I could see a skirt and boots walking across. When I sort of actually thought, what, and looked, then the image had gone. Do you have a theory to that, as far as who that might be? And it is rumoured that it's one of the Ellie sisters. There was five sisters? There was three that actually lived here until they died. This would have been a family home, a very, very remembered place for them. Where are we off to next? OK, this is the ladies' parlour. And what kind of reports of activity have you had in here? Things are thrown in here, you hear bangs, you don't know where they're coming from, people get touched. Three weeks ago, I was sitting on the barrier over there and got pulled backwards and my legs went up and the person who was standing about where you are seen something come through me. All right, so where are we off to next? OK, we're out here in the garden at Belgrave, and right where I'm standing is where probably one of the most famous images of a ghost was caught on camera by that camera up there. The image itself was captured at around about 5 a.m. It was raining cats and dogs, basically. There was a mist rolling across the wall, which again was strange because, you know, with the rain as it was, you know, where was this mist coming from? It just seemed like a ball of mist rolling across the wall. There was a fox. The fox triggered the light. While the lights were on, these two figures appeared. They never came from anywhere, and they never left to anywhere. One minute they were there, next minute they were gone. When I first saw the video, I didn't know what to think of it. But as a skeptic, I knew right then and there that I wanted Barry and Andy to try and debunk it. The tour was excellent. Um, this is the kind of investigation that I'm really excited about because there's a ton of stuff that we can debunk and really go after and find out what's really going on here. Well, hello, Indian Rub. How'd we do? Ah, great. Uh, got all the cameras set up. This is the camera one. This is the uh, monitor that's the camera out there that we couldn't splice into. Gotcha. Camera two is the ladies' parlor where they hear a bunch of noises, and that's where I guess everybody gets pulled from. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. Um, camera three is the dining room. This is where you see all the shadows over there, so I got all that. Excellent. Nice. Camera four is the hallway, the stairwell, and where the lady in crimson stands. So. Beautiful. Yes. Nice. So I think we're ready to go. Okay. Let's that's go down here. Yep. Let's turn the lights out. Andy and I wanted to start by doing a thermal sweep of the house. Let's take a quick look in here. You guys heard that whistle, right? Yeah, I heard the whistle. But there's nobody in here. As Rob and I walked into the room, we all of a sudden heard a whistle. It was this. Someone went like that. That's what I heard. I heard it from over here. There's no one in here. Andy and I started walking around to see if we could hear it again. There's me. Did you hear it a second time? I heard it a second time. That's the floorboard. You step on that board again. 
There it is. Okay. When we walked into the room, it sounded like we heard a whistle. But after some stomping around and hearing it a second time, we figured out it's the floorboards. So when Andy went back to the entranceway, he was able to find the exact board that created that sound. And a manifestation has appeared in the corner over there and witnessed by a group of 15 people or so. Do some EVP work? Sweet. This is Donna and Shannon in the dining room. If there's anyone present in the room with us right now, can you please state your name? Flash, we're trying to prove that you're here. And in order to do that, we need a sign that you're here so that we can document it. We would like you to physically manifest so that we know that you are here. Flash? There's nothing more impressive to me than visual evidence. So whether we're using the old 35 millimeter or a newer digital camera, we're always trying to hunt down activity and capture it on film. Is anyone in the room? Can you please show yourself in front of Donna? How about in that corner over there? Why don't you do something? Flash. Ooh. What the heck? I don't know. Shannon and I are investigating the dining room. An orange manifestation has appeared and witnessed by a group of 15 people or so. Flash. Ooh. Come on. Got like a reddish brown haze. What the heck? I don't know. What the hell? I felt something like. I felt something to my right, and I just reached out my camera and I point, flashed, and. I got something on my camera that I can't explain. All right, I don't know if you're here or not. I'm gonna ask you one more time. I want you to stand in this corner right now and show us that you're here. It's not too much to ask. Were you just here? Take another picture. Were you just here? I continued to take pictures and none of the other pictures had that reddish brown haze. It was very strange. How is that possible? I don't know. I have no idea. You know how these things don't like UV? Mm-hmm. Let's start from the bottom and push them up. There's a theory out there that some people believe that UV light will repel spirits. Is it true? I don't know. But if Barry wants to try it, we'll do anything to try and make contact with a spirit. All right, let's push him. Is anyone here? Can they give us a sign? Give me a sign of your presence, I will turn off the light. Dude, the energy up here is very, very strong. The energy hit level is very high. You know, the back of my neck hair is standing up, my eyes were watering, very key characteristics of a very high energy and very paranormal energy. Very, some kind of shadow just went into the maid's bedroom. Okay. Work with it. Try to get information out. Was that you that I just saw? I know I saw something come in here. There. In there. Mm -hmm. I said something move in there. It was just black and moved over to the left. That's where I saw the mist go. On the third floor with Brian, I said something move in the maid's room, just from right to left. Now, we push it to this point. Now we need to set the lights down. As a sign of peace, we have set the harmful lights down. Now that we obviously have your attention, can you give us a sign that you are here? I apologize for the brute force tactics that we took, but I think it was necessary. I'm gonna stand in the hallway observing the security camera. All right. Barry and I are going to debunk the ghost footage. He has a shell suit that would have been popular in the late 1990s. So I'm going to wear it, walk around outside, and he's going to look at the security cameras. After I see you out there, I'll release the hounds. Oh, great. Wonderful, Andy, you've just became a ghost. It seems that it may have indeed been someone 
coming around, messing about, um, and set off the security camera, and the reflective material has beamed out back, the ultraviolet, back into the lens. This is Donna and Shannon in the nursery. We're sitting down on the floor with you guys because you want to play. Could you move one of your toys and play with us? You didn't make that noise? No. Where'd it come from? Right back of me. Oh, I, do you see that? No. That's what it is. Is it water dripping? It's now? water dripping. That's what the little snapping noises were. Donna and Shannon. Hey, Rob. Hey, we're pretty much ready to pack it in. If you guys want to meet at Command Central. Yeah. One of the things that was nice is we were able to debunk quite a few things tonight, but this case really turns on the personal experiences. We have to find out if those are just good stories or are backed up by hard evidence. I'm really looking forward to them coming back to tell me what they've found, if they have found anything. I hope they've actually witnessed something to show that the place is haunted. Bill Grave Hall. Got a lot of evidence for you. I'm gonna do DVR like I usually do. Why don't you do pictures and audio recorders? Yeah, I've got the handhelds and the thermal. This is rock and roll. You know, we have a lot of evidence review right now, but the Belgrave Hall was such a great place to investigate that I'm actually very, very happy to go through all this evidence, and I have a funny feeling and a good feeling that we're gonna find something tonight. Well, I've just downloaded the photographs from, from the cameras onto the laptop, so I'm just going through them now, so. Yeah. This is whenever you and Donna we're in the dining room. There, there's a shot beforehand and a shot after. Everything's fine, but suddenly there's this That's it. almost red-brown haziness, no almost absorbing the, the, the flash itself. That was a series of events that were kind of uncanny. You know, Robin Eddie tried to debunk that photo. Very nice. Yeah, cool. Guys, I want you to uh, listen to this for me. This is whenever you were in the dining room. Yep. Something was going on with the photographs, and Donna asked, are you there? Yep. Were you just here? Were you just here? Yes. Did that tie in with that? Is that what was going on there at that stage? That was at the exact point. She saw that photo and said, are you here? Are you here in the room? And then, boom, got the EVP. Oh, you know, if this is the start of it. There we go. Dude, I got one. Finally. There it is. There. Wow. No, there's something going on. There's yeah. something strange with that. That's one of the best ones we've gotten so far. It is. It is. Lee, nice to see you again. And you? I'm on the edge of my seat here, waiting to see this that you've got. Now you came in, you gave us the tour, and we heard the stories. We said, okay, well, we have to find ways that there might be a possible other explanation. If we can find those ways, then maybe there isn't something paranormal going on. But of course, the big thing we had to start with was the most famous incident here at Belgrave Hall, which is the security camera outside. Right, okay. Right. And well, we got kind of lucky in this situation because we had the same weather pattern. Well, you informed us that we have the same camera that took the original footage years ago. And this is what we got. I'm going to come out. That's me. And you can see how I'm glowing. That's pretty impressive, actually. I mean, people have different opinions on this. But what you brought up tonight shows us that it could have actually been somebody like that. We were pretty happy with the way this turned out. But we did capture some interesting evidence. Now we'd like to play for it and see what you think about that. Right, OK. Donna and Shannon were downstairs in the dining room where you had told us a story of something manifesting in front of 15 people in the corner. What we're about to show you is a progression of the three photos. OK. OK. This is the first photo. As you can see, very normal. It's the next one that 
is very interesting. You can see the reddish color that seems to emanate around the box in that corner. Yes, I do. But I have seen it as well, actually. See, it had a reddish tinge, I told you. I think it started off orange mm -hmm. and then went red. Here's a picture that occurred right after. OK. Andy and I tried very hard to recreate that photo. I, you know, made sure that I had a finger in front of the flash. I, we did everything we possibly could to try to recreate it, and we weren't able to. We couldn't. Now, what's also interesting here is right after this last picture was taken, Donna says, is that you? Asking the spirit, are you present? And this is a response she, she got. Were you just here? Were you just here? That's quite amazing. What did you think you heard? Yes. <laughs> All right, there, there you go. go. And this is where the, the correlation is amazing because now you have the image exactly where you told us it might be. And now what we didn't know at the time because no one heard this is that we have a direct response. Okay. So this was, this was pretty amazing. Yeah, I can agree with all that. Well, Brian and Barry were investigating. Brian sees what he believes is a shadow duck into the maid's room ahead of his UV light, and he follows it in. We did capture something, and we'd like to play for it and see what you think about that. OK. I know I saw something come in here. That's quite impressive. I mean, it does sound like somebody going, shh. That's, that's it. That would possibly make sense, really, with being the maid's room where there could be a cot with a baby in. Mm -hmm. Brian and Barry are looking at your security monitor. Barry and Brian both noticed something very interesting on it. Wow. First time I looked at that footage, I said, that's a flashlight. It seems as if you've got two independent images, one being where the light is coming from, one being where the light is striking when it comes out of the flashlight. A couple problems with that. One, there was no one in that area. Two, you would have seen them come around the hedge area further on. Three, if it's someone walking with a flashlight, why didn't it turn on the motion detector as all other movement in that area does? That is pretty amazing. Very, very interesting, quite amazing. Do you believe that Belgrave is haunted? This case worked every one of our skills that we bring to an investigation, our debunking skills. We're able to debunk a lot of stuff. That's great. Then we run into our personal experiences. The whole mood of the investigation changes, and we start looking at, all right, maybe there is something here. Were you just here? Were you just here? And then Brian and Barry picked up this amazing piece of evidence in the courtyard where the original Belgrave footage is said to have taken place. We had some good personal experiences and a few EVPs. That's why we think there is paranormal activity that would classify this location as haunted. And I would agree 100%. Well, I'm, I'm really excited with the amount of stuff that you've uh, produced, and I'm really pleased that you came over. I think it's great. OK, Lee, thank you very okay, much. OK, thank you. Thanks for agreeing, um, Thank you. Thank you. The reveal brought out more than what I expected. At one point, I was on the edge of my seat. It kept getting better and better and better. The team have actually proved that this place is haunted. That's amazing. This is the type of case that we came out here for. Multiple examples of evidence corresponding to personal experience. Great debunking. This is the kind of case where it all came together. I agree. Attempts at communication with our investigators leads me to believe that you know, we're dealing with something that has an intelligence here. Something that's aware of our presence and is able to interact with us. Well, I'll tell you something. That ghost got hunted. International stuff. That's right.